In this lesson, let's see if we can go ahead and finish up these two sections right here. I think that's doable. What do you say? Don't forget where we are and what we're doing. Where we are is in blending modes testlab.psd in your working folder. If you want to follow along, please do. What we're doing is, let me turn off blend for a second. We're blending this and this and this into that and that and that. So we're blending the exact same image into itself. We're blending a slab of cyan into that image and a grayscale wedge into that one. With that said, let's get started with difference, an interesting one I call a negative maker. Now what it's doing is it's creating a color by subtracting either the blend from the base or the base from the blend, depending on which one has the greater brightness value. Brightness wins out here. So to me, with the grays, it creates a very negative look. This one brings in a lot of cyan, but shifts the colors in here. Here's an interesting thing about difference. If you blend it into the same image, it cancels out. Interesting. Let's go to exclusion. Now watch the one on the left and the center. Actually, all three change. But what exclusion does is it creates the same type of effect as difference, but it's not as strict and it has less contrast. So both of these are similar, but with less contrast. And because it's not so strict, we are getting an image, but with less contrast. That's exclusion. Subtract. Looks at the colors and actually subtracts the blend color from the base. That's it. So if you're working with grays, you're going to get a very dark look. With this color, the cyan, although you don't see the cyan up here, we did lose, as you can see here, a lot of the colors in here, and we lose it all again in subtract. Let's go into divide. Divide looks at colors and divides the blend color from the base. That's it, a simple divisional calculation. So results on gray would be this. Results on cyan would be very washed out, but that's what you get. And here's this one, same image, using divide. And it creates an interesting look. I don't know if I'd like it or not, but it creates an interesting look. That's divide. The next four, starting with U, use three values. U, saturation, and luminance. U is color. Saturation is the purity of the color, and luminance is the brightness of the color. So what is U doing? Well, U creates the result color with the luminance and saturation of the base and the hue, the color, of the blend. So with grays, you get something like that. With cyan, you do get cyan. And you're not going to get any change over here because they're exactly the same. That's you. Saturation just shifts what it does. In saturation, it creates a color with the luminance and U of the base, and this time the saturation of the blend. Again, it's not going to change this one, but the results are based on what it's got here and what it's got here. This is grayscale. Now the next one, keep your eye over on the first two, the one on the left and the center. Notice the only one that changed was the one in the middle. Color creates a result with the luminance of the base and the U and the saturation of the blend. So I use this one a lot in colorizing stuff. As you can see, this one is colorized based on that color. Looks the same, but it's only that color. This one is shades of gray. That's all it is. This one doesn't change again because it's the same thing. And finally, you have luminosity. And again, watch your three images. The first two changed quite drastically, didn't they? What luminosity does is it creates a result color with the U and saturation of the base and the brightness, the luminance of the blend color. So on these two, quite washed out based on what we have down here. Again, this one doesn't change. Well, there you go. Those are all the different blending modes. And understand something. They are so much like fingerprints when we bring our images in. Every image is going to give you slightly different results based on what you're doing but they are fun to work with. You can do some really creative things, some really wonky things, and some very impressive things using blending modes. We are not done with them, even though we're almost done with this chapter, because we'll be using blending modes in other chapters to achieve some pretty cool results.